Robert Fisk is an English writer and journalist from Maidstone, Kent. He has been Middle East correspondent of The Independent for more than 20 years, primarily based in Beirut. Fisk holds more British and international journalism awards than any other foreign correspondent and has been voted British International Journalist of the Year Award seven times. He has published a number of books and reported on several wars and armed conflicts. Early Life and Education Fisk was an only child, born in Maidstone, Kent. His father, already in his mid-fifties, was borough treasurer at Maidstone Corporation and had fought in the First World War. He was educated at Yardley Court, a preparatory school, then at Sutton Valence School and Lancaster University, where he cut his journalistic teeth on the student magazine Donna Gauntlet. He later gained a PhD in political science from Trinity College, Dublin in 1983. The title of his doctoral thesis was A Condition of Limited Warfare, Errors Neutrality and the Relationship Between Dublin, Belfast and London, 1939-1945. Career Newspaper correspondent Fisk worked on the Sunday Express Diary column before a disagreement with the editor, John Junor, prompted a move to the Times. From 1972 to 75, the height of the Troubles, Fisk served as Belfast correspondent for The Times, before becoming its correspondent in Portugal covering the aftermath of the Carnation Revolution. He then was appointed Middle East correspondent. When a story of his was spiked after Rupert Murdoch's takeover, he moved to The Independent in April 1989. The New York Times once described Robert Fisk as probably the most famous foreign correspondent in Britain. He reported the Northern Ireland troubles in the 1970s, the Portuguese Revolution in 1974, the Lebanese Civil War, the Iranian Revolution in 1979. The Soviet War in Afghanistan, the Iran-Iraq War, the Gulf War, the Bosnian War, the Algerian Civil War, the Kosovo War, the 2001 International Intervention in Afghanistan, the Invasion of Iraq in 2003, the Arab Spring in 2011 and the ongoing Syrian Civil War. War reporting Fisk has lived in Beirut since 1976, remaining throughout the Lebanese Civil War. He was one of the first journalists to visit the scene of the Sabah and Shatala massacre in Lebanon, as well as the Syrian Hammer massacre. His book on the Lebanese conflict, Pity the Nation, was first published in 1990. Fisk also reported on the Arab-Israeli conflict, the Bosnian War, the Kosovo War, the Algerian Civil War, among other conflicts. During the Iran-Iraq War, he suffered partial but permanent hearing loss as a result of being close to Iraqi heavy artillery in the Shat al-Arab when covering the early stages of the conflict. After the United States and Allies launched their intervention in Afghanistan, Fisk was for a time transferred to Pakistan to provide coverage of that conflict. While reporting from there, he was attacked and beaten by a group of Afghan refugees fleeing heavy bombing by the United States Air Force. He was ultimately rescued from this attack by another Afghan refugee. In his graphic account of his own beating, Fisk absolved the attackers of responsibility and pointed out that their brutality was entirely the product of others, of us, of we who had armed their struggle against the Russians and ignored their pain and laughed at their civil war and then armed and paid them, again for the war for civilization, just a few miles away and then bombed their homes and ripped up their families and called them collateral damage during the 2003 invasion of Iraq. Fisk was stationed in Baghdad and filed many eyewitness reports. He has criticized other journalists based in Iraq for what he calls their hotel journalism, literally reporting from one's hotel room without interviews or first-hand experience of events. His opposition to the war brought criticism from both Irish Sunday Independent columnist and Senator Owen Harris and The Guardian columnist Simon Hoggart. Fisk has criticized the coalition's handling of the sectarian violence in post-invasion Iraq.
and argued that the official narrative of sectarian conflict is not possible. The real question I ask myself is, who are these people who are trying to provoke the civil war? Now the Americans will say it's Al-Qaeda, it's the Sunni insurgents, it is the Shia death squads. Many of the death squads work for the Ministry of Interior. Who runs the Ministry of Interior in Baghdad? Who pays the Ministry of the Interior? Who pays the militia men who make up the death squads? We do, the occupation authorities. We need to look at this story in a different light. Osama bin Laden Fisk interviewed Osama bin Laden three times. Reporting the interviews in articles published by The Independent on 6 December 1993, 10 July 1996, and 22 March 1997. During one of Fisk's interviews with Bin Laden, Fisk noted an attempt by Bin Laden to convert him. Bin Laden said, Mr. Robert, one of our brothers had a dream that you were a spiritual person. This means you are a true Muslim. Fisk replied, Sheikh Osama, I am not a Muslim. I am a journalist whose task is to tell the truth. Bin Laden replied, If you tell the truth, that means you are a good Muslim. During the 1996 interview, Bin Laden accused the Saudi royal family of corruption. During the final interview in 1997, Bin Laden said he sought God's help to turn America into a shadow of itself. Fisk strongly condemned the September 11 attacks, describing them as a hideous crime against humanity. He also denounced the Bush administration's response to the attacks arguing that a score of nations were being identified and positioned as haters of democracy or kernels of evil, and urged a more honest debate on U.S. policy in the Middle East. He argued that such a debate had hitherto been avoided because, of course, to look too closely at the Middle East would raise disturbing questions about the region, about our Western policies in those tragic lands and about America's relationship with Israel. In 2007 Fisk expressed personal doubts about the official historical record of the attacks. In an article for The Independent, he claimed that, while the Bush administration was incapable of successfully carrying out such attacks due to its organizational incompetence, he is increasingly troubled at the inconsistencies in the official narrative of 9-11 and added that he does not condone the craze research of David Icke, but is talking about scientific issues. Fisk had earlier addressed similar concerns in a speech at Sydney University in 2006. During the speech, Fisk said, Partly I think because of the culture of secrecy of the White House, never have we had a White House so secret as this one. Partly because of this culture, I think suspicions are growing in the United States, not just among Barclay guys with flowers in their hair. But there are a lot of things we don't know, a lot of things we're not going to be told. Perhaps the fourth plane was hit by a missile, we still don't know. Recently published compilation of Osama bin Laden's writings reveals how frequently he is inclined to cite Western writers, Western diplomats and Western thinkers. At one point he even advises the White House to read Robert Fisk, rather than, as one might have supposed, the Quran views. Fisk has described himself as a pacifist and has never voted. He has said that journalism must challenge authority, all authority, especially so when governments and politicians take us to war. He has quoted with approval Israeli journalist Amir Ahas. There is a misconception that journalists can be objective. What journalism is really about is to monitor power and the centers of power. He spoke on lies, misreporting, and catastrophe in the Middle East at the First Congregational Church of Berkeley on the 22nd of September 2010, and stated, I think it is the duty of a foreign correspondent to be neutral and unbiased on the side of those who suffer. Whoever they may be, he has written at length on how much of contemporary conflict has its origin, in his view, in lines drawn on maps. After the Allied victory of 1918, at the end of my father's war, the victors divided up the lands of their former enemies. 
In the space of just 17 months, they created the borders of Northern Ireland, Yugoslavia and most of the Middle East. And I have spent my entire career in Belfast and Sarajevo, in Beirut and Baghdad, watching the people within those borders burn. Actor John Malkovich was asked during a 2002 appearance at the Cambridge Union Society whom he would most like to fight to the death. And he replied that he would rather just shoot journalist Robert Fisk and then British MP George Galloway. Fisk reacted with outrage at the comment made by Malkovich and also at his associating me with a jerk like Galloway. The Guardian published a review of the book by Fisk called The Great War for Civilization by Oliver Miles where numerous mistakes were pointed out in the book by Miles such as regarding the BAATH party in Iraq's revolutions. The Balfour Declaration, locations of U.S. bases, claiming the Hijazi Hashemites were Gulf people, wrongly assigning an Umayyad character to Baghdad, the century of Ali bin Abi Talib's death, and mistakes in the meaning of Arabic, Farsi, Russian, and French words and the birthplace of Jesus. Personal life. He married American journalist Lara Marlowe in 1994. They divorced in 2006. Fisking. Fisking is a blogosphere slang describing a point-by-point -point criticism that highlights perceived errors or disputes the analysis in a statement, article, or essay. The term originated from various blogs which have taken particular issue with Fisk's views. Many of these bloggers have responded by reprinting his dispatches on their blogs, adding their own paragraph-by-paragraph -paragraph commentary dissecting and debunking Fisk's assertions and opinions. According to The Guardian, Fisking has come to denote the practice of savaging an argument and scattering the tattered remnants to the four corners of the Internet. Awards and Honours Fisk has received the British Press Awards International Journalist of the Year seven times, and twice won its Reporter of the Year Award. He also received Amnesty International UK Media Awards in 1992 for his report, The Other Side of the Hostage Saga, in 1998 for his reports from Algeria and again in 2000 for his articles on the NATO air campaign against the Fry in 1999. 1984 Lancaster University Honorary Degree 1991 Jacobs Award for Coverage of the Gulf War on RTE Radio 1999 Orwell Prize for Journalism 2001 David Watt Prize for an Investigation of the 1915 Armenian Genocide by the Ottoman Empire 2002 Martha Gellhorn Prize for Journalism 2003 Open University Honorary Doctorate 2004 University of St. Andrews Honorary Degree 2004 Carlton University Honorary Degree 2005 Adelaide University Edward Said Memorial Lecture 2006 Ghent University Honorary Degree 2006 American University of Beirut Honorary Degree 2006 Queen's University Belfast Honorary Degree 2006 Lan and Cultural Freedom Prize worth $350,000. 2008 University of Kent Honorary Degree. 2008 Trinity College Dublin Honorary Doctorate. 2009 College Historical Society's Gold Medal for Outstanding Contribution to Public Discourse. 2009 Liverpool Hope University Honorary Degree. 2011 International Prize at the Amalfi Coast Media Awards, Italy. Works. Books His 2005 work, The Great War for Civilization, with its criticism of Western and Israeli approaches to the Middle East, was generally well received by critics and students of international affairs and is perhaps his best-known work, The Point of No Return. The Strike Which Broke the British in Ulster, London, Times Books, Deutsch, ISBN 0-233-96682-X, In Time of War, Ireland, Ulster and the Price of Neutrality, 1939-1945, London, Jill and Macmillan, ISBN 0-7171-2411-8, p. 
Pity the Nation, Lebanon at War, London, Oxford University Press, XXI, 727 pages, ISBN 0-19-280130-9, The Great War for Civilization, The Conquest of the Middle East London, Fourth Estate, XXVR, 1366 pages, ISBN 1-84115-007-X, The Age of the Warrior, Selected Writings London, Fourth Estate ISBN 9780-0072707-3-6, Robert Fisk on Algeria Independent Print Limited, Video Documentary Fisk Produced a three-part series titled From Beirut to Bosnia in 1993 which Fisk says was an attempt to find out why an increasing number of Muslims had come to hate the West. Fisk says that the Discovery Channel did not show a repeat of the films. After initially showing them in full, due to a letter campaign launched by pro-Israel groups such as Camera, sued Pigraphy, forgery misattributed to Robert Fisk Saddam Hussein, from birth to martyrdom, Egypt, IBDA, 272 pages, an Egyptian publication which falsely claimed Fisk to be the author.